You're listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and it's time for this week's Long Island News, the show that talks to newsmakers and other important people from Nassau and Suffolk County that matter to Long Island and Long Islanders like you. So each week, we'll have a conversation about issues that affect all of us. I live on Long Island just like you, and I want to know more about the people making the big decisions that affect all of us. Well, this week is the second of a two-part episode focusing on the special election to fill the now-vacant congressional seat in New York's 3rd District, which is, of course, as a result of the expulsion of George Santos. The special election is being held this Tuesday, February 13th, in the 3rd District only, which covers Nassau County and far northeastern Queens, and early voting is already underway. Well, the candidate on the Democratic ticket is Tom Swazi, who we spoke to about two weeks ago, and you can hear that interview by searching for this week's Long Island News wherever you listen to podcasts. And my guest today is the person running on the Republican ticket, Ms. Mozzie Pillip, who is currently a Nassau County legislator serving her second term. We want to welcome you to this week's Long Island News. Yes. So you had a you had an interesting night last night. I saw the debate. How do you feel like it came off? How do you feel you did? It was good. I felt very uh, good. You know, I point out the fact that he's a, a talker. He's very good on talking. That's his uh, um, expertise, you know, as a career politician. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, I told him, whatever you will say right now, you are the one who responsible for voting to open the border, the border crisis, the migrant crisis mm-hmm. that we are facing right now. American uh, nation is facing is because of him and he has to be hold accountable for that right, he's, right. again he's all about you know I'm pro- problem solver problem solver but you know what at the end he was the one who caused the issue mm-hmm. and absolutely he's not capable to go there to fix it right well you know I, I read some place where uh, you know you're you're a registered Democrat right Um, But I read someplace that, um, but you feel like your ideology is leaning a little more now to the Republican side and and that's what brought you to run for Congress. Exactly. Uh, The extreme policies that uh, the Democratic Party are promoting in the last few years absolutely took me far away from them. mm -hmm. Um, The Republican Party is the one that shares my values. As a mother of seven children, for me, safety comes first, security comes first, border security comes first. And uh, those are the issues, you know, the Republican Party care. And uh, that's the reason why I ran for county legislator seat as a Republican. And uh, I'm doing it again, running for Congress as a Republican. Right, right. Um, what, what, well, what specific part of the ideology of the Republican Party is what draws you? So as, what I said, as a mother of seven children, for me, safety is come first, you know. Mm-hmm. We came to the point that we're giving more uh, rights to criminals than law-abiding uh, citizens. I want to make sure I'm raising my children in a safe environment where we support our law enforcement. Mm-hmm. This nonsense of defunding the police, it doesn't going to work with me. Uh, securing the borders, absolutely. Uh, the amount of drugs and illegal, uh, yeah, you well, know, things coming from the borders is, is very concerning. Yeah, um, we, we especially all hear those, knowing, yeah. yeah, especially knowing, you know, the deadly fentanyl that's killing our children, mm. our American citizens. Um, something is a national crisis. Uh, yeah, you know, and I get that all the time. I also remember that Donald Trump was the president for four years. What did he do about border security? Uh, we, uh, were, we were going to have a wall that uh, Mexico was going to pay for, um, I, and, and it didn't he happen. Was building, he was building the wall, but you agree with me, since Biden took place, million coming illegal from oh, yeah. well, the border. They, as they were when Trump was president. The, the, that hasn't changed. No, 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 no that amount. You want to tell me that was that amount when uh, Trump was the uh, president? Oh, no. It definitely, Absolute- it definitely jumped up, I think, when people realized our Congress had no will. They didn't have to worry about of anything course. changing. Let's of come course. across the border. Exactly. If, especially if we are funding uh, sanctuary cities. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, 
Mm-hmm. And you kicking out ice from a uh, Nassau County, you are definitely giving a, a safe place for people. Well, don't wait to, on, a false, oh, a false okay. hope, a false hope. Yeah, we got to We got to go hope. back there, though. Tom Swazi actually explained why. You know, uh, again, my audience when uh, when election time comes around, uh, I tell them when they get those little pamphlets in the mail, everybody just throw them out because none of them are telling the truth, and you will really learn nothing about your candidates by reading the stuff that they put out. Yeah, Tom Swazi kicked ICE out of out of Nassau County because ICE was not comporting itself like human beings. They came in here like a gang, like a mob. And as far as him being, he was a county executive when he did that. And as far as I'm concerned, he protected the people in the county from a bunch of guys who thought they could run roughshod. They wouldn't even talk to the police commissioner. They were not cooperating with the police. So I don't think it's a bad thing that at that point in time, Tom Swazi kicked the ice out of Nassau County. How, how you explain the fact Tom Swazi was a person who also supported defunding the police movement? Defund- Tell me... He, yeah, he, he I don't know that that's, I don't it know is. that that's it true. Is, this is the same party, is the same party that don't support law enforcement. This is the same party that he and his party leaders are supporting, well, taking away the tools that law enforcement needs to keep us safe. And I can my show you the sound bites that say exactly my the opposite. Questions, my you questions know. for you, if we are taking the tools from law enforcement, who's supposed to protect us? We, the, the regular citizens. Oh, I think, you, I think law you, enforcement, you, certainly in Nassau County, has its own tanks, for God's sake. I think they have enough funding. Um, you know, they, they have equipment they're there not going to use. When hopefully. you have a strong county executive who back the blues mm-hmm. and majority, you know, when you have a majority legislators who yeah. back the blues, we have safe uh, a county. We're trying to do our best, you know. How you explain the fact that uh, uh, illegal immigrants came last week and attacked uh, our cops, and he was out? Uh, oh yeah, uh, that no was pay. that was quite an instance. Yeah, yeah. I you know the thing. The thing. The thing. I don't. I don't understand. I can tell you, as a mother of seven children, I worry about. I know the safety of my children, and should be a big concern. I spoke with police officers last week in the city. Seven thousand one hundred police officers left the department. Mm-hmm. Nobody would like to stay in that department anymore. You don't think this should be a concern? Oh, there's a line for people wanting to sign up for the police department. Please. Uh, they can't yes, wait to get a civil people. service job. We're never going to be at a loss for people who want to become New York City police. Um, no, no, don't, don't, that, don't assume this. That, the fact is every month, 500 police officers living uh, at the department yeah, should be you very can, concerning to you. You can do 20 you years and, and you can do 20 to, years and you can retire. I would leave too after I did my 20. It's a dangerous job. Of course, the turnover is going to be there. When you are taking away yeah. the tools from law enforcement, nah, nobody's doing taking that. Taking the, the yeah, country okay. in the wrong direction. I can tell, Mazi, I can, that I, have been I can tell you're campaigning. 10, I, I can tell you're campaigning. You're campaigning. I wanted to get to know the person. And all I'm hearing is what the Republicans have told me all along. Please tell me something different. Uh, I would like to know. This is what I stand for. Uh, You don't want to hear what I stand for? I don't want. I I want to be honest. Yeah, I know. This is the first time you're interviewing me. And I'm explaining to you why I'm running and what what the the main issues that are very important for my resident and and to me. In America, this is called political rhetoric. And I've, I've heard it all before. And... I heard okay, you say it last it, night. I, I, I heard those things. I, it, I wanted to get to know right. you. I was going to ask you a question. When you got the call to run for Congress, where, where were you? Were you at home? Were, or, or was this your idea to run for Congress? I wanted to run for Congress. So it's your That was my so, decision. Okay. I wanted, absolutely. But, you know, a lot of people wanted to run for Congress. The Republican chairman, the conservative chairman, they make sure to interview each one of us and mm-hmm. based on our uh, qualification, they decided I am the best candidate. Right. You know, I interviewed most of the candidates, uh, Democrat and Republican. They've all been here on the show, one after the other. Um, some very interesting okay. people. Okay. Yeah, people that wanted it before the special election, too. And again, this is a special election, which means again in November, we're going to do this all over again, right? Yes, Yeah. exactly. That's... Whew. So now let's talk about the border security thing. Your mailer said that you want to pass uh, the strongest border security laws uh, to close Biden's open borders. 
Um, and meanwhile, President Biden has said that he supports the bipartisan bill that's in Congress right now. And then he said, and I quote, if the bill fails, I'm going to be absolutely sure about something. The only reason the border is not secure is because Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican friends. So, first of all, would you call yourself a MAGA supporter? And then, again, we already spoke about the border. You mentioned the problem. I'm all about, I'm all about common sense government. Don't try to link me to different group. Mm -hmm. I'm all about working for the people. For me, it's not about Republican or Democrat. It's for me, it's all about to do the right things for the American people. Okay. How did we, as a country of immigrants, how did we come to, to revile? We hate immigrants now. We are, no, we don't hate the immigrants. You are absolutely we treat wrong them, about this. We treat them like I, we do. You are wrong. No, you are absolutely wrong about this. I immigrated to this country. My husband immigrated to this country. Mm -hmm. America didn't treat me bad. America gave me the opportunity to grow, to be strong, to be successful. America gave my husband, who came from Ukraine, mm -hmm. with nothing. A poor family, okay? He become a successful cardiologist. Mm -hmm. Who gave that to, to my husband? America. Well, nobody so, gave it to I him. He worked for it. He worked for it, but he was able to See, do America it. America gave the opportunities. He right. tre they treated us as equal citizens. Mm -hmm. Gave us access to education and to work hard. The American values. This is the country that I, I'm example my husband just the second example do you understand how many great people who came to this country searching the american dream yeah they were able to accomplish that yeah are we going to continue is that no other country better than united states of america i agree Give are we going to continue that we're going to continue to afford those opportunities we will to people? continue our immigrants to come to the country but they have to come here in the right way and we as a country also have to be able to help them to integrate to the society it has to be done in the right way mm -hmm. not the way they are doing it it's not you know it's not fair to right. the migrants so what's the right way you know i you, you a right way you were what, where you were born what is the right way? where Me? you were born i was born where, where seven, you were born here good in district three immigrated. as a matter of fact right in good. district three excellent that means you never immigrated you don't know what immigration is about correct i didn't have to do it myself Exactly. You don't know. No. So let me tell you, as a person who was born in Africa, in East Africa, mm -hmm. okay, one of the poorest country in the world, Ethiopia, yeah, no, I, which, no running water, mm -hmm. nothing, no ex limited access to education, uh, the poorest life you can imagine. Yeah. That is the child who's talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I immigrated at the age of 12 to Israel. Okay. With parents who didn't know how to write and read in their own language. Did your whole family together? Community. Was your whole yes. Your, okay. All the family. People who didn't know how to write, even to read. But they didn't we get separated though, most, right? One when? of the most advanced. We came together. Uh, and okay. when we came together, we had to learn now fast, you know, everything. We came to the most advanced country in the world, Israel, with all the technology. Mm. Okay. Things was very hard. Learning language was hard. Hebrew was so hard. You know, you're trying to catch up, but things are very difficult. Right. I'm Israel impressed. I'm impressed. You speak, you speak Hebrew to too? Us. You speak I Hebrew speak fluently also? Hebrew. Flu fluently Hebrew. Wow. Fluently Hebrew. That's impressive. Uh, so the process of being an immigrant, if you don't have a system, a supporting system, you can find yourself as a criminal faster than anything else. Yeah. You understand? It is. It is a lot. It is a journey. It's a journey to feel comfortable. To feel you know the culture. To feel you know the language. You can build yourself. You can work hard. It is a process. It's very hard to to make it. It's not easy, especially when you don't have plan in place. A country yeah. that has a plan to adapt to you. We, you know, it, 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 easy to go to to be criminal. So you just cannot open border and give full hopes for people just come and then also seeing them sleeping in a tent city that's not the way to do it nope. you want to bring immigrant let's bring let's uh, you know let's think about this how many people we're going to accommodate okay how are we going to help them to be integrated to american society because at the end of the day <coughs> you want them to feel successful happy and to contribute to the american society right. that is the right way very good
You're listening to this week's Long Island News on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and my guest today is Ms. Mozzie Pillip, a Nassau County legislator who is the Republican candidate in the special election for New York's District 3 vacant congressional seat, which will be held on Tuesday, February 13th, with early voting already underway. As a reminder, our interview with the Democratic candidate Tom Swazi is available wherever you listen to our podcasts. Just search for this week's Long Island News. Okay, let's talk about the abortion controversy. Democrat yeah. mailers, they say that you're running on a platform that calls for a ban on abortion uh, with no exceptions for rape and incest. Is that true? And what's your take on the you issue? Know, I, I, I got endorsed by the Republican and, and conservative uh, party. Okay. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I'm going to agree with everything the conservative party believes. Okay. And I made it so clear from the start, when it comes to abortion, every woman should make that decision. It's a personal decision. Mm-hmm. I chose to be a mother of six children. That was my decision. Right. Therefore, I'm not going to force my faith or my belief any woman and that means I'm not going to also support national abortion ban. And I'm not going to risk women's health care. This is right. what I said. But what my, my opponent and his party leaders did, they are applying politics now. Mm. They were lying and lying and misleading the public that I am this extreme person who is not going to allow abortion. For me, shame on them. Right. Because to take a person who stands with my own faith, telling you, even though that was endorsed by the conservative uh, party, yeah, I, and I made it so clear, I also have my own point. Okay, I will stick with this. They twisted everything because their agenda is to win this election. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they will do everything, including lying to the public. Well, that's and why I told them to throw out I the mail. Yeah. I told Thomas Wazi to apologize, not just to me, to the public as well. Right. Last night, though, at the, in the debate, it was a little unclear um, because you used the words pro-life and pro-choice almost as though they're I, interchangeable. I and they, they, I think they're no, too. No, it's not. I said it's a personal decision. I, Mazi, pro-life. This is me for my. No, see, my yeah, own. but they see you're using the wrong term, though, because people view pro. Oh, so you, can, you see the people trying to label you with. Uh, no, 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 no. Words. It's not about. La- it, well, it is a label, but it's there's pro-life and then there's pro-choice. And the pro-choice side this, is basically I, saying that they're not going to... Okay, when I'm yeah. telling you abortion is a personal decision, that means a right. woman can make that decision whatever she wants. This is right. her body. So that's she pro- can make the decision. That's pro-choice then. You can, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but, they, but, but you, you, you got to be careful because not, people I misconstrue am, what you not, mean. I, you see, that's a problem. You want yeah. people to go in one direction, no. straight direction, and no, it is. You know, I, Mazi, pro life because this is my religions, okay? But this is me. I make the decision for my own body. Every woman should make that decision. At the end of the day, you know what the woman has to remember? That I will protect the right because every woman should have that decision. Right, right, right. So, we, I mean, we need to be distinct. So, for your personal life, you're saying you're, pro, you're pro life, but your political life, you're not going to impose I'm saying, your what personal What I'm saying for as a right. woman. To women, I will protect women's rights. Okay, I that think the listeners need to know that. They need to hear that. And and it needs I to be... I am telling people. I yeah, am I know, but it needs to, to be, be honest, made clear. A lot, a lot of... Like, I'm so clear about this. Cannot be clear more than this. And the people, the women see that. They, they saw that. And so many of them, they don't believe that they... they the lie that uh, Thomas Wazi and his party is trying to spread. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I tell people to throw out the mailers. None of them. T- none of them right. are telling the proof. Right. You know? There's a lot of them. Yeah, There's yeah, and it's a shame. The, it's a lot of wasted money, isn't it? It's a lot of a wasted lot of money. money. Do you yeah. understand how much money they're investing against me? Oh my goodness, yes. Sure. It's unreal. Sure. Okay. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of scrutiny on this election, uh, replacing uh, George Santos. Um, now he was a Republican. Um, And one of the issues is that, uh, I mean, the Republican Party vetted George Santos, at least they told us they did. And then when he got out there and the lies started unraveling, we realized it didn't look like anybody did a really good job of vetting George Santos. We had him here, too. I introduced, uh, interviewed George before that last election. Um, We had a spirited conversation. What's changed now that 
you you feel like yeah, this so is a- since since uh, George Santos really uh, it was unfortunate you know um, <sighs> but the Republican Party took it very serious um, you know we were the one of the first one who called him to resign we never talked to him after that day basically and this time Chairman Cairo took his time okay to wait everyone that's the reason why it took them too long to come up with the name. They had to hire three different firm, firms to investigate each one of us. And uh, in the end, they came up with the decision, I am the right candidate for this. Uh, so they did the job this time. They, he, he also, the chairman, I admit, he said, you know what? I made a, I made a mistake. He's a human being. Sometimes, you know, you want to believe people. And it was a big mistake. But we moved on. Yeah. Well, and George is still talking. <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's still got something to say about everything that happens. Let's see. Okay. One of the biggest, uh, for a lack of a better word, attacks that the Swazi camp had made toward you was uh, your lack of availability. Uh, he claims you were jo- dodging the chance to debate him, having uh, only one debate. I, I um, debated him excellent yesterday. Uh, you know, we're talking about in a very, as a short, uh, uh, we didn't have enough time. Yeah. Okay. It was very tight, very yeah. intense. Yeah. I'm complaining about seven weeks. It's a big district. You have to be available. You have to meet people. And everybody want to meet you here. Everybody oh, yeah. calling you. Hey, you're famous now. And then now. on top of the media. And then the top of the media. Also, everybody want to interview me. Yes. Okay, I, I'm, I'm trying to give my best uh, availability to everyone. But then the end of the day, I'm one human being. I cannot be everywhere. Yes, yes. Okay. And that's why we're very thankful. Everywhere. We're very thankful that you made time for us to. And I know you're darting from one thing to another because you got a lot on your plate. You see? For sure. You see, yes. I'm, I, as, I as I'm driving to vote, I said, you know, we'll take this time to talk to you. Yes, I know. No, because I don't want to speak with people. It mm-hmm. just, you have to be realistic. You know, right. one person. But see, and there's 12 or 13 hours, hours you can work. I work even out 14 hours. Up. Right, but right. But you cannot. Gra- it's a very, like, seven weeks. But the, for congressional uh, race, right. seven weeks is nothing. But the great thing about being able, now my listeners just heard you explain, you know, exactly how you feel. You, nobody's talking for you. They got to hear you. So that's the big importance yes. about, you know, about doing interviews and and being available I, people I get to hear it from i did i was yeah. available i was available i mean in every interview radio interview uh, tv interview I'm, I'm there yeah how does your family take in it they know they know mom is a fighter they know you know my life story mm-hmm. and they know i work hard and they know everything was achieved by working very hard and i'm giving them to the example nothing you know they were born here Right. As uh, and they have this American attitude, you know, they are just American children. Ooh, ooh. Um, they don't know what challenge, they don't know what difficulty. How do you? Um, yeah, how do you feel comes, about? How do you feel about uh, that? Uh, that that's got to be weird for you watching them grow up in an American culture. Very weird. Yeah. Very weird. And very weird because, um, you know, you know, my husband and I work very hard. We didn't have nothing. It's all, all you know. In early age, we were very responsible. I can tell you. When I work at, yeah. at summer camp in Israel, um, summer camp in Israel, my first salary, I, I brought this to my parents and I gave it to them. I never right. saw that salary. That I was helping them. Mm-hmm. I, I, as a student, I just, you know, I was young, maybe like 14. Yep. I work and I was so proud and I made a good amount of money, two months. And I came and I gave it to my parents. That right. was the most beautiful moment uh, of pride. I was oh. able to have my my parents. So that's the difference between yeah, yeah. <laughs> me yeah. and my husband and our children. They right. have different realities. So I am showing them even at the age of 44, I'm still learning. Sure. I'm still working hard. Um, yep. And I want them to take this example and to apply it for their life. Yeah, I think your backstory is amazing. Uh, to The things you've gone through and the experiences you've had. That's uh uh, no, the, nobody, the way also, nobody it, can take that away from you. Nobody can take that you. away from you. I, appreci- say, I, appreci- you know, I appreciate that. Because I think uh, that people may be brought up in America. If they had to go through that, they wouldn't have made it. I think you, you uh, because of your background, you have a different grit, I'll call it. You, you, you yeah. know, you're, you're able to feel things that people in America hopefully will never have to deal with. 
but but you did yeah. it. That that is uh, definitely an accomplishment that nobody can say anything about. Um, Thank you. I, I appreciate that. But also, but that's the things. That's also the American values. To be honest, of hard working. Yes. You know, we we had it. Yes. But now we have a generation of. Uh, well, kind of laziness a little bit, you know. Well, the other it's thing is, to see that. we used to talk about the American dream, you know, uh, and yeah. and you from uh, you know starting at zero have apparently achieved that. Um, but it's it's getting harder and harder for people, even the kids leaving school. They've got student yeah. loans. They've got things that are stopping them from doing what what most of us want you know they want to be able to buy a house and get married have kids have a, a good job that and it, it used to be one person in a household could have a job that would afford all that and yeah and yeah speaking of buying houses um we were talking about the salt uh the the salt the uh, cap um and you mentioned it last night on that that you're going to try and uh, get them to restore that mm-hmm is that is yes, that like, definitely yeah absolutely absolutely it's very important we have to bring it back uh new york is uh, you know it's not affordable anymore it's very hard uh, it's for young people for uh, people with children and uh, everything is very expensive and uh, bringing salt back uh, uh, to new yorkers is going to help uh, us a lot and i when i go to congress i will collaborate i will negotiate i will work with people Republican and Democrat, and uh, mm. I will bring salt back. How I you, really will work and deliver. How do you feel about uh, uh, Congress and what what they're doing, or what they're not doing, or, or what they're doing? Um, right now, is a, a tough place. You know, you you have the majority, but you don't have the majority. It's not really effective. That's the reason why we need to. I, I that's the reason I want to win this election because once I will be able to go to Washington, I will, we will have more majority and it's going to be easy as a Republican to deliver for the, to the New Yorkers. Mm. Um, um, we have to work. But the bottom line is we are there for the people and we have to work. Well, you know what's sad I am, is... I'm, I am here. There is a lot of cameras. Everybody want to know what Mazi is about to do. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> sure. Well, you're famous now. There. You know, you're like a rock star now. Yeah. You, people are going to clamor <laughs> for your, your attention. The one thing, though, is this that's kind of... Yeah, and everybody you, is now, all the cameras, like, oh, my we God. Look, now, we, we look see at, what they're happening? We look at the optics. Look at yeah, right. Look, look at this. See, look I at told this. you. You're a rock star. I have to finish. Yeah, you're I a rock star. I have to finish, star. my friend. You got to learn how I to sing. I <laughs> I will come next time again, okay? All right. I have. I will come. I'm sorry, but there's a lot. They're waiting. I have okay. to go in. And listen, thank you very much. Promise me you'll come back sometime so we can talk some I more. Will. It'd be I nice will. if we get you in the studio. I'd love to learn more about you. Okay. No problem at all. My guest today has been Ms. Mozzie Pillip, a Nassau County legislator who is the Republican candidate in the special election for New York's District 3 vacant congressional seat, which will be held on Tuesday, February 13th, with early voting already underway. We want to thank you for taking the time to be here today to speak with us and be oh, well. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. As a reminder, our interview with the Democratic candidate, Tom Swazi is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for this week's Long Island News. And now the clock on the wall says it's time for this week's Long Island News to get on out of here. I'm Bill McIntyre. Remember, you can listen to us right here every Friday at 3 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.